Hey, what's up guys? Tugi here, back again with another episode of my NBA My League with the Seattle Sonics, the reborn Seattle Sonics, the defending champions, the Seattle Sonics. Now, I've talked about this over the past few episodes, and ultimately, this is it. This is our last run. It's either we defend this title or we don't, but regardless... This is it. It's gonna. It's it's the right time to get ready to call it with the Sonics. We have accomplished what we wanted to have accomplished. Draft a glory style, obviously, as you would expect, would work, and we have one hell of a team here to the point where you know it would mainly just be okay. Darrell Arnold's what 28 years old, 29 now actually. This is it's this is the team at its peak. We're more than likely going to start regressing. We might have one or two more years of true contention, but we are going to start regressing. So now is now's the right time to be looking at, you know, getting ready to call it quits with this team. We'll see if at our height we can go back to back. Obviously, if we're overly successful this season, by that I mean if we win again this year, the temptation is certainly going to be there. But there is pretty much no better version of this team. It's going to be, again, maybe one or two more years of being competitive. Maybe a little bit more than that. But then obviously Arnold and Dorikas are going to age. It's going to be tough to replace them until we're overly terrible again. Which we probably won't be until Bohannon goes. So basically, it's going to be be competitive for a few more years. Middle of the road, kind of be competitive because of Bohannon or unless we get a draft steal. And then eventually just be completely terrible again and then build it back up because we don't have the ability to trade, of course. So right now is our best opportunity to be overly successful. We are at 100%. We managed to just absolutely decimate the Nuggets in the first round. Standing in our way in the second round, Golden State, if we move on, we'll be taking on OKC or Las Vegas. We are going to finish up with the postseason right here. And right now, for however long it lasts, whether it be this round, the round after, or a repeat finals appearance, this is it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the Warriors happen to look like at this point. It is going to take forever, and oh my god, it's going to take even longer now. It's going to take forever and a day to get all the way over there. The one thing... The one thing that I will admit it didn't take that long, but I, I love what uh, MB or not NBA. Well, but I love what MLB has in terms of just being able to quickly jump to look at you know different teams. Regardless, this is the team standing in our way. 23-year-old Douglas Kemp at point guard. Aaron Holiday also there. Karan Daly is down an overall point as well. And Steph Curry is still there at 40 years old, 73 overall. Don't know how much of him we'll be seeing. In this uh, in this series, they also have Art Taft, hell of a name at guard. So obviously they're stocked up relatively interestingly for the next few uh, for the next few years. But a massive advantage in that regard. We have the advantage of Ford as well. Vince Edwards at a 78. D. Flory. They have some great computer generated names that are there. Power forward wise, Andrew Mack and Ivan Rab. They also have Louis Hollins. Not too bad in terms of depth there. And then the main name for them at this point is Melvin Briggs. The 29-year-old is their key player. Now, in terms of an offensive, uh, you know, in terms of an offensive output, not a ton to be expected, but a rebounding machine and an extremely strong defender that we are going to have to deal with. He does average, or at least is averaging, 21 points a game. He averaged 16 in the regular season. He's averaging 21 points this postseason. And, I mean, those efficiency numbers are absolutely outstanding. So it's going to be interesting to see just how much of a challenge that presents for us um, and whether or not we have to change up anything with the strategies. I'd like to think not. Maybe Marsh and Dorikas can handle, you know, can handle their own business down low. But mainly in terms of rebounding, how much help there is there in that regard to deal with that threat. But aside from that, this should be pretty damn straightforward. I mean, we should have this series in the bag, no questions asked, and we should be set up. As I hit the wrong sim, and we win game one by the score of one to nothing, uh, we'll view the box score for that. Whoops. 
I was gonna say, this should be a cakewalk for us, and as it turns out, it was in game one. 106 to 84 outscored them drastically in the first half. The second half was a little bit closer. Darrell Arnold put up 30 points, 12 assists. Absolutely ridiculous. 24 points for uh, Irvin Bohannon had 7 rebounds, 6 assists, and 5 steals. He did everything for us in that game. Had a terrible shooting percentage, though. Good lord. A.J. Marsh, 22 points, 10 rebounds. Dorica, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Then you have the likes of Cato. Uh, McDaniels and McKinney were not all that effective for us. And then Murray Hopkins, 5 rebounds as well. So the shooting percentage wasn't ideal for us, but Golden State just blew it from the three-point line. Two for 18. That is the difference. They had the advantage in points in the paint, which you would expect. The rebounds, though, they had the slight advantage. Ever so slight. So, points in the paint, not shocking. And maybe we should look to change up that strategy. It's a little bit weird, though, because their biggest offensive threat, of course, is their center. But they took so many three-point shots in Game 1 that it's like, okay, what, what do we really want to do here? What are we looking to do in terms of how to set it up? Do I just want to sim it this way for the rest of the time? I kind of do. You know, let's just do it. Let's sim game two. We don't even need to use simcast. Let's see what happens. Game two is a win. I will take it. Two to nothing in this series. 107 to 96. Not too bad. We got that separation in the second. They battled back in the third. But we were able to hold on. Arnold with 26 points. 22 and 16 for A.J. Marsh, 17 points for Bohannon, 17 points for Cato in 12 minutes. Not too shabby. Dorikas and McKinney both up there in terms of rebounds. I mean, again, there, there, there's some interesting points to how we did, but I will take it, all things considered. Shot 42%. Golden State, I mean, only 16 threes this time. Uh, we sunk them in that regard, as you would kind of expect. Again, points in the paint. They outdueled us. It's nice to see that bench points aren't still glitched, so that's cool to be able to see it from this view. And in terms of rebounds, we actually out-rebounded them, which is very promising. Six blocks to two, biggest lead of 14. They had a, they had a lead of three at one point. So another successful game for us. We will continue onward. It's going to be game three coming up as the series shifts to Golden State. Let's see what happens in this third game. It is another win. 121 to 113. Not even close. Briggs led the way in terms of points for them, but we have Darrell Arnold. <laughs> 37 points for him. A double-double, 22 and 10 rebounds for Irvin Bohannon, and 22 points, 14 rebounds for A.J. Marsh. Absolutely outstanding. 14 points for McDaniels. Dorikas, 12, uh, 12 and 10, which is just ridiculous. Four blocks as well. I mean, say what you want about them having a rebounder first. Dorikas obviously has that offensive touch. He's putting it to use thus far. A tremendous performance yet again. Now, they yet again failed in terms of delivering in terms of three-pointers. I mean, 17 to 46, or 17 out of 46. And then, of course, they only had 8 out of 24. So, talk about other teams living and dying via three-pointer. Uh, that is absolutely our strategy. And it's working out. Uh, at least for now, second chance points, a massive differential there in their favor. And in terms of the rebounds, they had the edge, but it wasn't by a drastic amount. Eight blocks to one. I just can't believe that when they have a dominant center. That is crazy. But we are one win away from making it back to the Western Conference Final, although last year it wasn't exactly a Western Conference Final, was it? But let's see what happens here. Can we complete the si uh, the sweep here in the second round? We cannot. It's a one-point win for Golden State, 105 to 104. Briggs led the way, Bohannon with 32 points, and we have we might have trouble. Darrell Arnold, 21 points in 21 minutes. Was it a slight injury? What's wrong with Darrell Arnold? Is the question. But you can see, I mean, no other major point getters. The rebounds were up there, but it, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a one-point loss, which is very disappointing when they were that bad from the free-throw line, but I mean, they took 10 more shots than we did. I mean, obviously, the three-pointers in general, I mean, it kind of balances out, never mind, but the second-chance points, that's kind of where it was. Fast-break points as well. A couple of, couple of things to worry about. They killed us in terms of offensive rebounds, but is Darrell Arnold hurt is my question. 
He does not appear to be. He just didn't play that much, which is interesting. We'll go with interesting. So we lose for the first time this postseason. We'll sim game five. We're apparently at 100%. And this time we seal the deal. So while Vegas is struggling against OKC, we have punched our ticket back to the conference final, beating Golden State in five games. So there was a little bit of a concern there. But we, we got back to it again. Arnold only 31 minutes, but you can see now four 20-point guys in this game. Uh, you have A.J. Marsh leading the way, 28 points, 13 rebounds. Bohannon, 11 assists, 27 points. 25 points for Dorikas, 22 for Arnold in just 31 minutes. And then McKinney, 11 points, 10 rebounds as well. A much, much better game for us. Briggs continued to lead the way for them point-wise, but it just was not enough. Uh, again, the three-pointers, the missed three-pointers absolutely sunk Golden State. Uh, points in the paint were close. The fast break points were at least a little bit closer. Second chance points, they still dominated, and I imagine that's where some of the offensive rebounds would come up from. Yeah, they had five more, five more defensive rebounds as well. So that makes sense. Uh, but 15 turnovers to eight and a much higher shooting percentage. 134 to 108 is the final score, and we are back in the conference final. The question is, will it be OKC or will it be Vegas, the number one seed that meet us there? If Vegas fall, we have home court. Not looking too likely though, and indeed it will not be the case. The one seed against the two seed, but on the flip side, because you had the same exact matchups, 1v5, 2v6, it's the five and the six making it out of the east, Brooklyn and Orlando. So there's no doubt Whoever makes it out of this series between us and Vegas are the favorites for the rest of the way. Arnold and Bohannon are all playing, or both playing well. Let me double check McKinney here. How is he doing? Uh, 671 true shooting still. 12 and a 16 in terms of his efficiency ratings. McDaniels is at 12 and a 10. Yeah, I mean, McKinney's still been better. I mean, I can't really judge him off of like a low point total because obviously he's not the main man. You'll see Marsh occasionally lead the way, excuse me, in terms of point totals. But yeah, Arnold and Bohannon are, I mean, obviously, they're the main guys. So let's uh, let's take a look at the Vegas Aces, shall we? One of the other teams that we joined the league with. Of course, they have not been restricted to the building process that we have had. As you see, Nelson Fletcher, arguably the top player in the league right now. The Las Vegas Aces, this is what we are up against. Eric McDaniel and Murray Warren leading the way at point guard, shooting guard, Dwight Marion and Neil Fry. So still a very young team all around, but obviously such a massive advantage for us in terms of the guard matchup. Uh, Juan Hernan Gomez, Hernan Gomez is still there at 32 years old. They're still there, still in the league. They also have Chase Ogman, so obviously massive advantage there. Power forward is where it's close. Randolph Daniel is their top guy. Dario Saric as a backup option. And then at center, Josh Taylor and Christian Slater, the sixth man of the year. So again, while I don't have a distinct advantage, the matchup is very close in terms of the big man battle at power forward and center. Very, very close. And that is going to be the way that they win this series. Obviously, Briggs isn't bad, but it's a dual threat down low this time. And that could give us a little bit of trouble and, again, might require us to change some things around tactically as we head through this series. But we're going to get it underway right now. They won a single game more than we did in the regular season to have the number one seed in the playoffs. You can see, though, in terms of points, Slater, their sixth man, is leading the way. So kind of interesting, but we should be able to make the most of this. Game one goes to the Sonics. 110 to 107. Much closer than I would have expected. Arnold had 37 points, a little bit of everything for him. Cato played 22 minutes and had 22 points. Jesus. Marsh of 43 points, 11 for Hopkins, 9 for McKinney, 10 rebounds. Dorikas, though, 9 minutes. Urban Bohannon struggled. He didn't even shoot that much. Five points in just 27 minutes, which again has me concerned about injuries, but all in all, it, it worked out. I think we would have had a prompt about an injury. Uh, the three-pointers were obviously a major factor for us. 
Let's see what else here. Fast break. They led points in the paint. They dominated. We're going to have to make that change despite the fact that we won. We have to focus on just rebounding, even though we, of course, work that quick offense. Yeah, the offensive rebounds were a major factor there as well. They outblocked us. But we do walk away with the win. Our biggest lead in this game was by just six points. It was a fourth quarter comeback that allowed us to walk away with the victory. And again, we have an injury scare, but apparently we get away with it. But we absolutely have to change this up. So offensive rebounding. <sighs> I'm still going to go some crash and others get back. I think I'm still going to go with that. Like We don't want to put too much of an emphasis on offensive rebounding, but fast break points have also been an issue. So I think I want to limit transition, and then our defensive focus is going to be protect the paint, despite the fact they take three-point shots. And defensive rebounding, we're going to go crash defensive glass, and we're going to see how well that works out for us. That would seemingly neutralize what they are good at. Brooklyn managed to take game one against Orlando, our old friends Orlando. So let's get ready for game number two. As Again, we avoided injury. Slight change to the strategies. Will that bode well for us? Game two goes to Seattle. 125 to 110. Much more convincing victory this time out. Darrell Arnold, 34 points, 12 assists. Ridiculous. Marsh, 33 points, 9 rebounds. 26 points again. For Julio Cato, he is outrageous. McKinney with 15 points. Dericus 11 on 11. Uh, three blocks as well. Bohannon played just seven minutes, and again, there is an injury concern there. I mean, how else do you explain it unless the coach is just like, well, Cato's killing it, so let's play Cato. Uh, I mean, I, what else could it possibly be? Shooting-wise, it was pretty close. Fast break points, I mean, 10 to 4. Points in the paint, we limited it a little bit more. They still outscored us by 10. Bench points were way up there. Uh, the rebounds, they still had the advantage in that regard, but we still walk away with the victory. They only led by four. Our biggest lead was by 18. So again, are we avoiding injury? Bohannon's hurt. <sighs> okay, Bohannon is hurt. Oh my god. Bohannon is more than hurt. Irvin Bohannon has a broken ankle. Now, he wasn't exactly living up to what he could be in this postseason. You know, the, the numbers are down for sure. But that is a major, major loss for us. That loss cannot be understated. No matter how well Cato's been playing, and he has been tremendous, he is not Irvin Bohannon. And if, if there was ever going to be an opening for us to inevitably lose this series, this would be it. Wow. A devastating turn of events there. Now the replacement comes down to Torres or Davidson. 14, 8, and a 5.30. And it's, it's going to be Richie Davidson that slots in, even over Jackie Nash, the... Uh, defensive specialist. I just He's so inept offensively that I just can't do it. I know defensive specialists, you know, they have their place, but he is just so inept offensively, it's not even funny. So, we are absolutely going to have to rely on Arnold, Cato, McKinney. I mean, you know, our main guys are going to be playing a lot. Uh, we'll drop Hopkins down to 20, bump McDaniels up to 20. And then probably, it's a tough call here. Maybe go like three more for Dorikas and Marsh each, and then bump up Davidson to like 12 minutes. I don't remember exactly what the spread was, but I think that'll be how we do it. And then again, it's it's on Darrell Arnold. I mean, I don't think I want to list anybody as the second scoring option. I mean, in terms of the offense, it should probably be Marsh. And then Cato, just because of how good Cato's been. I think that's what we'll do, is we'll list those three, and we'll see what happens. But a major, major moment in Game 2. We walk away with the 15-point win. We're up 2 to nothing in the series, but that is horrific for Irvin Bohannon. 
to fall to injury. Whether or not the depth is now at a point where we can survive it, let's find out. It's game three, and we win again in dominant fashion, 127 to 89. I love Irvin Bohannon, but we we did well without him. Darrell Arnold took over. That's what he can do. Back-to-back -back MVPs, 45 points in 43 minutes. McDaniels put up 20 points. 17 for Cato. Didn't exactly shoot as well as he had previously. Marsh, 13 points, 11 rebounds. He had Hopkins at 11 rebounds. Dorikas didn't have the best offensive game, nor did Davidson. But it was enough to walk away with the win. And, I mean, in terms of shooting percentages, just overall better. We struggled a bit from the line. They still killed us on the fast break, which doesn't make much sense, and they're still dominating in terms of points in the paint. But we did limit the second chance points, which is a positive. We actually out-rebounded them on the offensive front, and just in general, uh, 16 turnovers to 8 would also be a factor. Biggest lead 2, biggest lead 42. We are one win away from making our, oh my god, who's hurt? Oh my god. Lefteris Dorikas is hurt too. How badly? Day to day with a bruised right hip. My god. I think that's the only thing that could really slow us down. So let me hit play game, and it'll simulate the other game as Orlando ties their series, and we'll back out and redo the rotation. Injuries to two of our biggest players right now. Really, you know, endangering our chances here. Irvin Bohannon's done for the year. Dorikas will at least be back soon. But that is still incredibly rough. As I think it'll be those eight leading the way. So Wesley is now going to factor back into this team. Murray Hopkins is going to be the starter. And again, Darrell Arnold is going to have to play all of the minutes. We're still going to have McKinney ahead of McDaniels, despite the fact that McDaniels is playing really well lately. Uh, we'll have Marsh there. Hopkins will probably be on 35 minutes. Uh, McDaniels on 20 is fine. Davidson on like 15. Wesley on like 15. I mean, to be honest, we might, we might want Wesley on a few more minutes than... Uh, than Davidson. I think that's how, that's how the lineup is going to sort out here, but absolutely crazy. Bench depth, of course, will be down to 8. I don't know why it was ever on 10. Well, of course, the, the minutes wouldn't have been up there anyway, so that wouldn't have been a factor. But yeah, that is that is just brutal that we're struggling as much as we are. I think we're just going to remove the preferences on those, more than likely. Offensive rebounding, we're just going to crash for it because limiting the transition didn't really work out too well for us. So we will try to limit transition. So we are without Irvin Bohannon. We are without Lefteris Dorikas. As we get ready for Game 4 of this series, we are one win away from having the chance to defend our title against either Brooklyn or Orlando. Can we complete the sweep? over the number one seed despite missing two of our top four players? The answer is yes, we can. That is unreal. We sweep Denver. We beat Golden State in five. We beat Vegas via sweep. We are going back to the NBA final to either take on Brooklyn or Orlando again. It was not even close. 117 to 85. The Darrell Arnold show yet again. 36 points, 11 assists. Cato with 20 points, 16 points for Marsh, 12 points, 15 rebounds for McKinney, 10 points, 15 rebounds for Hopkins. McDaniel's with 10 points, and Wesley as well. Six points, two rebounds in 19 minutes of play. The general stats. I mean, the shooting percentages just. And again, they, they died by trying to keep up with the pace we can set by hitting three-pointers. Fast break points, they doubled us up, but we limited them. Points in the paint were a hell of a lot closer. Uh, they still thrived off of second-chance points. Uh, but the rebounds were pretty damn close. 17 steals to 7. Obviously a massive factor. They led by 2 at one point. We led by the <laughs> by 38 points. The, the measly total of 38 points. We are back in the final, we will be taking on 
I think it might be Brooklyn as Dorikas is back. Orlando wins two straight. And it is a rematch from last year's final. We beat the Orlando Magic in seven. Darrell Arnold was MVP. Will we see the same thing happen again? This is at least the third time. No, the fourth time because the Magic also lost to the Denver Nuggets. The Magic have been very successful over the course of this series. And now they get to try and take advantage of the fact uh, that we are missing Irvin Bohannon. Which, again, that, that effect cannot be overstated. And Lefteris Dorikas, though, thankfully back in the team. And we'll get him back up to 35 minutes a game. We'll get Hopkins back up there as well. Probably drop Davidson by just a little bit. You know what, Dorikas, man, if you're, if you're in, you are in. There you go. That is going to be the setup moving forward. Did not think Julio Cato would be the guy for us. But still has a true shooting of 650. 21.4 on the efficiency rating. And then Darrell Arnold is well on his way to another MVP of both the regular season and playoffs if we get the job done here. Sean McKinney still has a 686 in terms of true shooting. Uh, whereas McDaniels is at a 589, so that's not even a question. We at least get Lateris Dorikas back. Let's uh, let's take a look. My rotation is currently invalid. Is Dorikas... Oh, Dorikas is still listed as fucking reserve. Son of a bitch. I didn't even notice. It said he was back, so I just fixed it. But, all right. Well, whatever. We'll just drop that. Actually, you know what? In fairness, I'm going to bump that up. We'll put Murray there. And then I'll change out Dorikas for Cortez. And that should be fine because Dorica should be back to 100% before we even start. So that's not a big deal. Let me sim to game one of this series. Actually, Dorica might not be good to go. Let's double check here because we still have to take a look at the Orlando lineup. Nope, there we go. Dorica is good to go. He's not 100%, but hey, if there was ever a time to play someone when they're not 100%, now is the time to do it. Let's take a look. How drastically different will this Magic team be? We have made our way past Golden State. We have made our way past Vegas in very easy fashion. We are uh, eight and one in the only nine, you know, in the nine games that we've simmed here today. The Orlando Magic. This is the squad. Sasa Turk is their point guard. At, whoops, well, not on the Dallas Mavericks. Shooting guard, Ron Pearson is still there, and Joel Humphreys rounds out uh, the three guards that they have. That's decent decent enough depth, though. And obviously, Pearson should be a really strong player for them. At forward, Richmond and Miles Bridges, certainly. I mean, Richmond is the best uh, small forward in this matchup, and obviously they have an ungodly amount of depth there. Way too much, if you ask me. Power forward Julius Randle now at 33. Predrag Tarlick. Tarlack. Still there. And Evan Cheeks also on the team. Uh, Toriman is hurt, who had done really well for them last year. And then at center, Eric Collier. Or Collier. Still there. Reed Christie as well. It's not a bad team. There is some decent depth. Their team might honestly be better than ours. But obviously, if you look at this squad... We have the X factor of Darrell Arnold, Lefteris Dorikas, and then A.J. Marsh leading the way. And you factor in guys like McKinney and Cato, who are just on fire right now. We should win this. We should. The bottom line is we have the best player in the series. Darrell Arnold is arguably the best player in the league. He is back-to-back -back league MVP. This should be a repeat performance, I would like to think. But let's find out for sure. Because I don't really care much for the Daily View. Let's see what we have here. Game one in a rematch against the Orlando Magic goes to the Sonics. 131 to 108. Darrell Arnold, 32 points and 11 assists, leading the way. McKinney, 27 points. Dorikas with 23. Cato with 14. Marsh, 12 points, 14 rebounds. Yeah, Davidson had 11 points. McDaniels, 10. Hopkins, 2 with 6 rebounds. The Magic were led by Turk. Just 19 points. So we had three guys on our team outscore their highest uh, their highest point getter. Shooting percentages we dominated. 
again, we just, I mean, especially from three, hitting nearly two-thirds of our shots. Free throws weren't a big factor, but our percentage was a little bit low. Fast break points, limited points in the paint. We outscored them. Second chance points, we outscored them. Assists were better. The rebounds were better. Six steals each. Uh, same amount of turnovers. We fouled a little bit more, but the biggest lead of nine compared to 25. We walk away with another victory. We'll go to game two. Can we walk away with another win there? Yes, we can. 103 to 82. Golden State, not that long ago, tried so hard to make it through the finals, you know, without losing a game. We are nearly on the same pace. We are two wins away from being repeat champions, and it was Julio Cato who led the way 30 points in 35 minutes. Arnold, 17 points, 14 assists, 17 and 12 for Dorikas, 13 points for Richie Davidson in just 12 minutes of play. Uh, Marsh, 12 points, 14 rebounds. McKinney with 10 rebounds. Overall, another dominant victory. Again, 103 to 82. And you look, I mean, we just had way more of the ball. It's the only way to explain it. Fast break points, they had the advantage, they had the advantage points in the paint. They had the slight advantage. I do wonder, though, uh, rebounds, we had the slight edge. Steals were a bit of a difference. The blocks, 16 turnovers to 14. I mean, it's kind of tough to say, too. Team fouls, we were way up there. They never led in that game. From the opening jump, they never led in that game, despite having nearly three minutes more of possession. That is just outrageous. Simply outrageous. As we walk away with the victory in Game 2, we go to Game 3. Can we, you know, can we practically end this series? You'd like to thank. Granted, we came back from 3-0 down last year, so as Kevin Garnett said, anything is possible. Game 3 against the Magic. As Dorikas is back to 100%. Game 3 to the Sonics. We are one win away from back-to-back -back titles. 122 to 106. 41 points for Darrell Arnold. Only 5 assists from there. Cato, 33 points. <laughs> 11 points, 16 rebounds for Dorikas. 11 points for McDaniels. Marsh with the double-double. Just outrageous. It was Pearson leading the way for them with 20 points. I mean, in terms of the shooting percentages, it makes sense. Still struggled a bit from the free throw line. Uh, fast break points in the pay. Second chance points were extremely limited for them. Uh, I mean, the rebound game, we just absolutely killed them. They had more steals. Uh, we had more turnovers. It's kind of ridiculous to think that we outscored them by that much, and they only led by a max of two points throughout that entire game, 122 to 106. Despite the fact that some of the numbers are a little bit positive for them, doesn't matter. Now, we did see the title celebration last year. We do know if we were to jump into this and win this game now, uh, that we would manage to uh, at least see fans in Orlando but ruthlessness. Let's get down to business. It is game four. Are your Sonics back-to-back -back champions? They are not. The Magic survive 117 to 112. And I'm a little bit more nervous about that than I should be because of last year's reverse sweep. Arnold, 41 points. 21 for Marsh, 11 rebounds. 20 points for Cato. 12 and 12 for Dorikas. Yet, yeah, we still fell short. Same amount of shots. They had the slightly higher shooting percentage. And in terms of threes, obviously we took way more and had that higher percentage. It's honestly kind of surprising to see that they were able to win by five. And it's, it's tough to tell. I mean, the bench points obviously was a major factor. They had the slight edge in rebounds, slight edge in steals. And the four extra turnovers, the 25 fouls to 15, we never led. I mean, they got off to a good start, outscoring us 27-17. to 17. I mean, as, as impressed as I was, I'm even more shocked. We did not lead for a single moment in that game. They had a max lead of 20 points. We just didn't show up when we needed to, yet we still made it close, which is pretty nice. But not our strongest effort, and after what we saw last year, that's unacceptable. We need to close this series out right here, and right now, game five, please. Oh my god. 122 to 113. 
the Magic have gotten themselves back into this series. 33 points for Arnold, 8 assists. Cato with 22 points. 22 and 13 for Dorikas. But that is an absolutely brutal effort. What the hell? Turk, Richmond, and Randall, all 20-point games. In terms of the shooting percentage, we were just off again. 8 of 32 in terms of 3-pointers. I mean, the shooting percentages speak for themselves. We, again, were just off. We got dominated in the paint, dominated in second-chance points. That is absolutely horrific. And again, our biggest lead was only 3 points. And we are suffering from magic syndrome here. Struggling to close out this series, we go to game six. I'd like to think we're going to win this game, but there is a chance that we're going seven. Let's see what happens. Game six of the NBA final. We were up three to nothing in this series, much like the Magic were last year, and Orlando on a gigantic run. The Magic nearly blow it. They only end up outscoring us by seven. We need to get back into this. I don't know where the hell these struggles are coming from. But this team has absolutely shut down. We're still hanging in there despite these struggles. But my god, down 53-51 to 51 at halftime. So it's much closer than it felt like. Because we definitely, uh, you know, we definitely struggled a bit. In terms of the offensive rebounding, let's go some crash and others get back. And in terms of a defensive focus, let's go with, I still think, protect the paint. That's still their specialty. And defensive rebounding, uh, we'll go some crash. Others get back. We'll do that. We'll do that. Try to open up the game a little bit. I almost want to go conservative defense, too. Because we've got, I'm going to go conservative defense because we've gotten into foul trouble. And I feel like that could be a pretty big factor here. Obviously, they're still missing Irvin Bohannon. Let's see what we can do here. Second half. Can we take control of this game and end this series and win back-to-back -back NBA titles in the process? Or will the Magic threaten to pull off the impossible two years in a row? We were the first team to ever come back from 3-0 down in an NBA final, and they're threatening to do the same to us in the rematch the very next year, and they're going to do it. We're going to Game 4. Unless there is a crazy run, or Game 7, we're, we're going. We are going to Game 7. The Magic win again, 106-94. to 94. And a year after reverse sweeping them in the final, they are one win away from doing the same to us. That is astounding. 4 of 26 from 3. And it makes you wonder if we have to change the... Uh, they were 4 of 26 from 3 and they still won. It, it makes you wonder if we have to change something here. 50 points in the paint despite us trying to shut down the defensive setup here. That is... That is crazy. <laughs> if you wanted a, an interesting ending to this series, here the hell we are. For whatever reason, between us and the Magic... Someone has to be reverse swept, apparently. What the hell? I, like, coaching-wise, I don't even know what the hell to do here. <sighs> Arnold, like, are, is, it, is it you? Are you dropping the ball all of a sudden? Not really. You're still killing it. Cato? Still killing it. McKinney? Still killing it when you get the ball. AJ Marsh? Shooting could be a little bit higher, but it's not bad. And then Dorikas is... Kind of struggling offensively. McDaniels isn't really getting it done. I think we need to give Hopkins a few more minutes. Give the big men a little bit of a rest because McDaniels hasn't been all that impressive. And then Richie Davidson also hasn't been all that impressive to the point where I'm going to risk it and we're going to throw Jackie Nash in there as that defensive option because that might be the better way to go. I can't even blame the loss of Bohannon here because, my God, we're just completely blowing this. The same way they felt a year ago, we feel right now. I'm going to drop the help defense a little bit. Running play is a third of the time. 
this is absolutely insane. This is absolutely insane. Offensive rebounding, where we're going to focus on limiting the transition. Oh, God. Well, some crash, others get back. Defensive focus will still be to protect the paint. Defensive aggression will go no preference. And defensive rebounding will still go run in transition. I never saw this coming. I'll tell you that much at least. We storm our way past Denver, Golden State, and Las Vegas. We go up 3 to nothing against the Magic. And now here we are. Game 7 against Orlando again. Let's do this. The title is on the line. Our to Oh my god. Oh baby, 11 to nothing to start off this game. We are playing with a vengeance here on home court. In an effort to defend our title. I mean, by the end of it, we only ended up outscoring them by 8 points in that first quarter, but still a good start. All of this in effort to retain our status as champions after having finally won last year. And at halftime, barring a ridiculous run here by the Magic, we're going to take a decent lead into the second half. That is indeed the case. 63-44, to 44, up by 19. <sighs> Just 24 minutes away from retaining. Let's see what we can do here. Come on. I believe in you. Shut this down. Don't let them do to us what we did to them last year. Orlando just outscored us 23 to 9 in the third quarter. It is a two-point game. Oh my god. This game is completely up for grabs. We blow it to start the second half. We're off to a good start in the fourth, and that needs to continue. Can we hold on? We're up by nine, now ten, with five minutes to go. I would like to think that this game is over. It's still much closer than I want it to be. It's a 12-point lead now, though, and that should do it. There was a little bit of a scare, but ultimately... We are going to hold on, and we are going to end this as champions. Here we go. Luckily for us, fans in the stands, Guys, 20 the seconds away from game. being crowned champions this Draft of Glory style series. It's been an interesting run. It's a shame that someone like Dario Golob wasn't a part of this team or Cameron Black, which can mainly be viewed uh, due to my own faults. But what a team. Kato misses. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't feel that much it doesn't feel that much more special with fans in the crowd, I gotta be honest. <laughs> back to back. More flash bulbs than a fucking WWF event in 2000. But I'll take it. Irvin Bohannon goes down. Julio Cato steps up. Nice little glitching through the fan's body there. That's that's awesome. Darrell Arnold and company have done it again. Back to back champions. And like I said at the start of this episode, that is pretty much what you would expect over the next few seasons until Darrell Arnold and Dark, or not Darrell Galo, but until him, Darikas, as Arnold is again finals MVP. Once those guys start to hit regression, that's when we'll take that step back, and then it would be nothing but, uh, uh, it would be nothing but just kind of meddling, you know, middle of the road with someone like Bohannon leading the way. I don't think we'd be all that successful, and it would take us just being absolutely terrible until we were able to turn it around. But there you go. Darrell Arnold back-to-back -back finals MVPs averaged 30 points and nearly 10 assists per game. Absolutely tremendous. The face of this series, no doubt about it. No doubt. Cato actually led the way, though, in terms of points with 30 points. And again, what a job by him. Uh, you think of how low of an overall he was when we originally got him. And now for him to have had a run like that, especially just from the bench to then having to step up and replace Bohannon. He was great. Arnold, 27 points, 16 assists. Marsh with 12 points, 12 rebounds. Dorikas with a double as well. 
And yeah, I mean the shooting, but we we were you know they were terrible from three. We did we weren't that much better. I mean thirty two percent technically. Uh, we didn't we just hit the extra shots, but all in all, an impressive performance, a max lead of apparently nothing. I like that some of the stats don't glitch out from the uh, from the in game sim, but there we have it. Back to back championships, the times two. It's such a it's such a small part of the screen, but it means so so much. Is Darrell Arnold like where is Darrell Arnold? I wonder for total points. He's probably not way up there yet. Uh, probably not. Giannis ended up twenty fourth. Not bad. He's still going too, if I'm not mistaken. Have we cracked the top uh, the top one hundred? By the way, EA, if you're looking at this for the NHL series, yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Tony Parker, who just retired IRL, finally. I don't think our boy is up there just yet, but one of these days. One of these days. Team history. I mean, no, uh, no defined rivals, but three division titles, two conference championships, and, of course, two titles in three appearances. Which is absolutely ridiculous. Darrell Arnold, I mean, the highest scoring games for this team. Uh, the most shots made, most three pointers. I mean, there's a couple of tens. But a 29 rebound game for Murray Hopkins a couple of years ago. Just ridiculous. And then total playoffs as well. I mean, Arnold had the 50 point game this postseason. I mean, you talk about the playoffs, you talk about Darrell Arnold, unless you're talking about rebounds. But you talk about the playoffs, you're talking about Darrell Arnold, and just what an absolute monster he has been. Absolutely insane. And again now, for him to win back-to-back -back MVPs, back-to-back -back titles as the leader of this team... It is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous what he has accomplished. And again, you look at the career stats. I mean, granted, the uh, player efficiency rating wouldn't be there, but just what he's done in the past few seasons alone, crazy. And career stats, I mean, the man's averaging 22.5 points a game career, which, considering how bad some of these teams were, you know, that he was a part of early on, I can't say it's all that shocking. But two-time MVP, two-time NBA champion, a three-time All-Star. Not bad for the former number one pick in 2020. And as always, I always say this, there's never a good time to say goodbye in a series like this. But, like I said, it's pretty much how it's going to go. I don't think Willard Torres is ever going to turn into an elite point guard, but he's not going to be too bad. We've just hit the point where we're going to be competitive. And again, once Arnold starts to regress, Torres might be able to help out the team. Uh, you still have someone like Davidson, Cato, and Nash, but Bohannon would eventually lead the way. I mean, he'll be approaching Arnold's age by the time Arnold really starts to regress. We're at the point where it's going to be competitive for a title year in and year out. And when you look at just how dominant we were before we even made it to the finals and the fact that we were up 3 to nothing in the final... You know, some of the drama surrounding the series is uh, it's somewhat gone, just because again we're gonna be we're gonna be dominant year in and year out. So never a good time to end a series like this. But with Arnold's contract coming up, now might be the right time. So we will say goodbye to the Sonics for now, if not forever. But an interesting series, at least in my opinion. For how this went, how the process went, and uh, overall, not too bad for the first uh, for the first NBA venture on this channel. Now, as far as what replaces this series, I don't know if it's going to be NBA related. Again, I might you know try to continue what I've been doing in terms of cycling out series instead of just trying to be like, hey, I want to play all these games, all the sports at once. Not really the best strategy. So uh, we'll see what happens, and when NBA returns to this channel. But, again, I enjoyed this series, and I guess it kind of sucks to say goodbye, but when you know the team's going to be overly competitive year in and year out, it's like, eh, well, you know, eh, what are you going to do? Damian Lillard made the Hall of Fame. What a guy. 
What a guy. So guys, that will do it. I thank you very much for your support with this series. I will see you again soon with something else, unfortunately. But at least we get to leave on a high note. Darrell Arnold and company, champions yet again.